and welcome, welcome. I'm Kat Miller from Amplify Influence. So great to have you here. I hope you are relaxed. I hope you're ready. I hope you're comfortable and I hope you have a pen and paper to take some notes because in this video, I'm going to be sharing what being an introvert or an extrovert says about how fast you'll succeed in business. I'm going to be sharing my four step tier model formula, which is a success creation formula that you can use to understand why you're not achieving success in, in any area of your life and also how you can kind of reverse engineer the process uh, of the success that you want to create. So we'll look at why it's not happening and then what you can do to actually make it happen. So let's start by thinking about whether you identify as an introvert or extrovert. Now I have a lot of people talk to me about this and they use one or the other almost like a way of explaining their results or their actions. So those of you on live, I'd love it if you post in the chat box, there's no right or wrong, introverts and extroverts both have traits that can serve them and it can hinder them, <laughs> right? So there's pros and cons for each and roughly about 50% of the population is, is half half. So whether you identify as an extrovert or an introvert or neither, you might say, I, I don't want to label myself, I don't want to identify as either, or you might identify more as an ambivert, which is someone who has qualities of both. Now, all of us identify in some ways. Sometimes we love hanging out with people because we're human. We are social creatures. That's what humans are. So all of us love being with people sometimes and all of us like being alone sometimes. So that's totally normal. So an ambivert is not someone who sometimes likes being with people and sometimes doesn't because that's all of us. But with it, like how, how ambiverts are typically described is that they can flip into either depending on their mood, uh, their context, and their goals. So ambiverts have also been called uh, outgoing introverts. So introverts who people are like, you can't be an introvert, surely. Uh, and I get this quite a lot, actually. Like I naturally identify as an introvert because I love spending lots of time by myself, I think, compared to a lot of people. But uh, a lot of people don't realize that I'm an introvert. They assume because I'm a speaker, because I'm constantly showing up on video and running events and can be quite, what's the word, high energy when I'm with a group. People often assume that I'm an extrovert. Uh, ambiverts are also described sometimes as antisocial extroverts. <laughs> so naturally uh, extroverted, but need a lot of time to recharge before socializing and after socializing. Uh, and then ambiverts are also known as social introverts. So a lot of people um, that, that really need a lot of time by themselves to draw energy still love connection and being social. So it kind of comes down to the amount of time that you really want to be with other people and where you get your energy from. So a lot of people tell me that they are introverts and therefore they struggle to put themselves out there. For example, doing Facebook Live videos or running webinars. But by the way, just pop in the comments, what do you think you are? Do you think you're introvert? Do you think you're extrovert? Do you think you're ambivert? Do you think you're none of the above? <laughs> I'd love to know. Just pop it in the comments. I want to see what you identify as. So it was uh, it was Carl Jung who advanced a the theory on introverted and extroverted personality types, and Jung defined introversion as inwardly directed psychic energy, inwardly directed. So we may assume that on, that extroverts are more willing to put themselves out there and kind of present themselves more boldly and confidently, and that introverts may be shyer. It used to be that extroversion was a strong predictor of who would become a leader. Though according to an article, it was done by businessinsider.com, psychologists are discovering that introverts do just as well in leadership roles. So a lot of these stereotypes are really being challenged. Um, I've read quite a few articles on introverts that are, that are really successful as leaders and as entrepreneurs. So sometimes or 
maybe in the past in Western society, extroversion was really celebrated, like the outgoing and enthusiastic person um, often gets things done more and maybe known as a greater communicator as it like as an asset. Uh, but there's there's more and more articles, like for example, I read one in entrepreneur.com showing that the introvert extrovert scale it represents only about 20% of what they called the big five personality traits, and that it, there's a lot more to a person than how much social stimulation they need or want. And this is really what I'm wanting to drive through as a point here is that your success in business, your rate of success in business has very little to do with whether you identify as an introvert or extrovert. So in my experience uh, over the last 17 years in business, our personality actually has very little to do with our rate of success. I know a lot of successful extroverts and a lot of successful introverts and a lot of unsuccessful of each and I've, I've noticed that in different places where where I've worked and where I've done business so if that is not really determining our success or our rate of growth our rate of success what is what actually is determining our rate of success and this is where my tier model comes in so the tier model that I created it's a success creation formula so the, the TEAR, the T-E-A-R, it stands for thoughts, which lead to our emotions, which lead to our actions, which lead to our results. So that is just the reality of how psychology works. I didn't make that up. I just gave, gave it a label. I just named a concept from everything that I've looked at in psychology, from NLP to fixed and growth mindset uh, to cognitive behavior therapy, uh, Joe Dispenser's work, like so many different things that I've looked at, there's this one concept where our results are based on our actions, our actions are based on what our feelings and all of it is coming from our thinking. Really the story that I tell, that we tell ourselves. So the way we think about ourselves, the way we identify, the way like our self-image it's made up of the stories that we tell ourselves, right? It's made up of the beliefs we have, the, the thoughts we have about ourselves, they're stories, we make them up. Stories are, they're, they're just thoughts. And so if we wanna change our results, we need to look at what thoughts are driving those results. And most people try and attack it at that results level. I'm not getting those, I'm not getting the results I want, therefore, how can I get these results? And it's all about the results, as opposed to reverse engineering up and going, where did it all start? Because it always starts with what we're thinking, always starts with what we're thinking. Everything that's created starts with a thought. You know, that bookshelf behind me, someone thought about it, they got a feeling from that thought, whether that was a feeling of motivation, creation, innovation, whatever it was, they took action, they created a result. So thoughts are habits and you can create new thought habits. So instead of saying, oh, I'm an introvert and so I, I find it hard, well, you think about the amount of introverts that are successful. Uh, if you look at the top 10 richest people in the world, uh, multi-billionaires, Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, who else, Bill Gates, about half on that list of 10, about half are introverts and half are extroverts. And then if you really unpack what introverts are doing, they are, they are still putting themselves out there in regard, because introvert, extrovert is how you get your energy. So, People like Richard Branson, you know, he is one of those introverts that sits on a couch and he isn't showy. He's kind of, you know, like he looks kind of shy. He looks a little bit awkward. I've seen him live and uh, he's presenting all the time. Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Warren Buffett, Steve Wozniak, the co-founder co of Apple, uh, Barack Obama, they all identify as introverts. And these people present, 
a lot of them present all the time. They don't use being an introvert to stop them. And if you want to succeed in business, your rate of growth is how willing you are to take the right action. That's it. Regardless of how you're born, what your natural personality type is, often our personality forms by just us telling ourselves the same story over and over again. And so it's not an indicator of success. It, it really has very little to do with it. So you look at the tier model and you think, okay, I want to create fast success in my business. I want to make money. I want to help people. I want to create uh, maybe an online course or a webinar or an, a group coaching program, whatever it is that's your next level, what you want to create. And so we just look at the model. And what I, what I suggest is that you write down your page T-E-A-R. So play along, do it now, just grab a piece of paper, write down the page T-E-A and R. In the R line, we call it the R line, the results line, I want you to put the result that you want. So let's say the result is to uh, make $10,000 a month. So you put that as a result. Then you go up to the action. What actions do you need to take in order to make $10,000 a month? Maybe you need to run a webinar. Maybe you need to run four Facebook Live videos. Maybe you need to reach out to 20 people a day. So you write all the different actions. Maybe you need to create a free downloadable resource and create a landing page and a funnel in order to attract your ideal clients. Maybe you need to run Facebook ads. There's so many different lead generation strategies and you just need to pick them and go for it. Okay, for the next 30 days, if I want to make 10 grand, these are the actions that I need to take. Okay, cool. What emotion do I need to have in order to take those actions? Well, I don't want to be depressed, anxious, fearful, stressed. What I want to be is determined, motivated, uh, have that feeling of energy that you're unstoppable. Think about the emotion that's going to make you want to take those actions and just write all those emotions out. So it might be a feeling of utter determination, uh, passion, uh, gratitude, whatever you think the emotion is that's going to drive you to take those actions. And then what thoughts do you need to think? Now the thoughts are the kind of little sneaky, sneaky sly ones. It's, it can be hard to, to realize what thoughts we need to be thinking in order to get those feelings, take those actions and get that result. So the thoughts is where often you need to write it out or you need to go through it with a coach. Because in order for us to change, all change is a change in meaning. And for us, if we've been looking at something the same way the whole time, it's really hard for us to see a different perspective on that thing. We often need someone else to give us a different perspective. Like if I hold up my phone, I'm looking at the Apple logo, you're looking at the face of my screen. We're both looking at the same object, but I'm looking at it at a completely different angle to you. I can only see this. You can only see this same object. It's the same with a result. We look at it one way and there could be hundreds, if not thousands of way to, ways to look at it. So it's very hard for us to try and do it in our mind. We want to externalize it, get it down on paper, do some self-coaching on it. That will get us a little bit further than keeping it, keeping it in our head. But ultimately, really, if you want transformation, you need someone else's perspective. You need someone else to see things or draw things out of you that you didn't, that were unconscious, previously unconscious. And about 90% of our thoughts that we think every single day are unconscious. We're not even aware that we're having those thoughts but those unconscious thoughts are driving our results. So we could sit down and go, okay, if I want to get that result 10K a month and I, and I need to take those actions, I need those feelings, what might I think in order to get that? So it might be uh, whatever it takes, I have everything I need to succeed. That's a thought. How often are you repeating a thought like that in your mind? Like if you, if you really want that result, 
how often are you having these commands that are going to get you that result i absolutely can create 10k a month as a business owner uh, and i will keep going until i find a way if we thought that thought dozens and dozens and dozens of times every day and we felt it we actually felt the emotion of it we didn't just logically say it eventually we would start taking the actions and start getting the results but most people they're focusing on their problems they're focusing on all the reasons why it won't work they're focusing on the things that are going to get them a completely different result so let's look at the other side of it and look at what your current results are i want you to Write down on the other side, so you've got your T-E-A-R for your goal, what you want on, the, on one side. New piece of paper, T-E-A-R on your current situation. And this is where we can start reverse engineering what thoughts are driving your current results. It sounds simple, but it is actually, uh, it takes thinking, it takes intention to really get to know what those thoughts are, what those unconscious thoughts are. So look at your results. Let's say you, you are only making $1,000 a month. Okay, that's the result. $1,000 a month, I wanna make $10,000 a month. Okay, what actions am I taking that are leading to $1,000 a month? And so you might say, okay, well, I'm contacting five people a month, okay? Uh, I'm doing maybe one Facebook Live every three weeks. Uh, I'm reaching out to um, my email list once a month. So you put in all the actions that are causing these results. And then what are the feelings driving these actions? Oh, well, I don't really think I know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm kind of a bit vague. Uh, I, I don't really trust myself that I've got a really specific niche. So I'm coming from a place of doubt. Um, I'm also coming from a bit of a place of fear because I don't want to turn up on camera so I'm avoiding running a webinar or I'm avoiding doing Facebook ads because I'm so fearful of losing money. So can you see the fear, the doubt, all of that is leading to these kind of wishy-washy results where you're hardly putting yourself out there, you're not showing up boldly, you're not taking the action, maybe you're procrastinating. So if you think about the energy, like the flatness that comes with procrastination, maybe that's causing you to just watch a whole lot of Netflix, um, muck around in things that are just easy, that aren't really what I call fast lane activities. So you get in the fast lane and you get results fast. Um, <clears throat> I give an analogy of these footpath activities, then there's like steady lane, medium lane, fast lane. Fast lane is like directly contacting people, sales calls, private messages, um, following up leads. There's steady lane activities like creating a webinar, creating a client attraction funnel, creating consistent, really great content. Uh, there's steady lane activities like sending a, a weekly or twice a week email to your list, uh, updating your Facebook group regularly, posting really valuable content. And then there's footpath activities, which is things like mucking around on Canva, trying to make things look pretty, creating things that you don't really need to create, consuming a whole heap of content that's not really needed, but it's just quite fun. And so if you look at your results, you look at your actions, you probably find that if you're not getting the results you want, like the 10K or more a month, you're probably doing a lot of these types of footpath activities. You think about the feelings, the doubt, the fear. What thoughts are causing that? Well, probably, I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, nothing works anyway. Facebook's really hard to figure out. I suck at technology. Uh, I don't have time. You know, all of these things, they are affecting our results because of that lead-in. Can you see it? It's simple, but it takes intentionality to think think about what are the actual thoughts driving that feeling, driving that action, driving that result. So it's, it's a super simple model, but the power in it is not just intellectually going, oh yeah, that makes sense. It's actually sitting down and doing it. It's going, right, I'm gonna look at my current results and why I'm getting it and what is that dominating thought that's causing those results and then what are my desired results and what is the dominating thought that I need 
in order to create that result I want. So I encourage you to do this activity. If you want that outside perspective, if you want someone else to unpack it with you and actually see a different perspective that you might not be seeing, because you might be so in it, something that we're none of us are good at is seeing what other people see that we can't see, you know, our blind spots. We are no good at seeing our blind spots. Most of the time, people are stuck and not getting results because they don't know what they don't know and they can't see it. It's in their blind spots. So if you want an outside perspective, if you haven't had a session with me, I would love to offer you a session where we go through it, we unpack the results you want, what you need to do to actually get it, and I'll help you identify the thoughts that are currently causing your actions and then the thoughts that you need to. So if you want to do that with me, if you haven't had a session with me already, I do a free one free session for first time people so you can apply for that uh, apply for that call there um, for a 45 minute strategy session and also I'm speaking about this next week next Wednesday Wednesday the 17th of March I'm speaking in the city at an event called challenge to change and it's like a post uh, International Women's Day celebration. So if you do want to know more details about that, just let me know and I'll flick you through the details. But otherwise, I encourage you to take this tier model, run with it. It's super powerful. It's really how you create success fast. And ultimately, it really isn't about whether you're an introvert or extrovert. It really isn't. It's about your thinking because extroverts and introverts can both have the same thoughts and get the same results, regardless of how they get energy. It really has very little to do with it. So let go of all that, focus on your thoughts and the thoughts that you need to be thinking. We become what we think about most of the time. I'd love to hear how you go with it. Please pop in the comments. What did you think? Uh, any comments, any questions, pop in the comments box. I would love to read them and reply personally to you. And I look forward to uh, seeing you again soon. I won't be here next Wednesday because I'm speaking at this event in the city. So we're going to have a, a break next Wednesday and I'll be on the Wednesday after. Great to have you here. I love you heaps. See you soon. Bye, friends.